And then let's get over to our replay. And let's look at the build viewer. All right, now one thing I want to highlight for a sec, Putin, you have auxiliary mod too. Why? Uh, what? Which one? Aux mod instead of instead of your basically your main battery re reload, which is what you would normally have, I think, in Schlieffen, right? Nah, well, secondary. I guess I, I just personally I feel like main battery still is. I, I mean, I would agree with you. Uh, normally, but I mean, th this this is a full secondary. Like, if, so, if you look. If it's full secondary, why didn't you go for the auxiliary mods in slot one then? Wait, didn't I? Oh. Nope. <laughs> to be honest, because I don't want my. Uh... <laughs> it's not like the torpedoes ever live. But you don't want to lose them. I don't want to lose my main batteries. Like, mm -hmm. while I agree with you, you're probably better off with guns you control than guns you don't. But yeah. at the end of the day, who really wants to push into the Schlieffen anyway? So I'm like, well, okay. I'm going with the secondaries for the burst damage on DDs. The faster they can start going, the, mm -hmm. the sooner they're going to get the hits. Okay. Um, now let's take a look at your commander build. You've got a gun feeder. Now it's interesting you didn't choose preventative maintenance because preventative maintenance would help prevent your torpedoes from being destroyed as well, right? Correct. But it's one of those I'd rather be able to switch shell types faster. And okay, if I'm relying on my torpedoes, there's major issues going on, and I massively screwed up. Okay. Granted, um, these are 13 kilometers, and I can. Stealth Torp? Mm -hmm. uh, end of the day, I'm a battleship, and it's all about your guns. And I say that, and I'm still pushing secondaries. Right. Now, if you've got loot yens, there's, there's the extra boost of uh, preventing module decaps there as well. You go to 45% instead of 30, which might make it worthwhile, but gun feeder does help you switch between HE and AP that much quicker, so I get it. Yeah. Loot yens is on the Z, which is why he's not in here. Got it. You've got IFHE, and by the way, I totally agree with you. I wouldn't put him on Schlieffen either, unless... Like, if I, mean... I played Schlieffen a lot, yeah, mm -hmm. it would make more sense. But I right. play my Z more than I play Lugins, and we're talking clan battles, yep. where all that stuff is disabled anyways. Yep. Now, you've went with it... IFHE, and I'm guessing that's for your secondaries. Yeah. Where's my penetration? There it is. 32 millimeters of penetration with the 105s. And then you should have, yeah, 47 millimeters of penetration with your 150s. So running IFHE ensures that your shells will penetrate deck armor of pretty much anything you're going to run across. Uh, you want adrenaline rush, concealment, and then manual anti-air, or sorry, manual secondaries, secondary range. And then you want an extra heal and an extra charge of repair party, which makes sense on the German battleships because they have a limited number of repair parties. Or damage control party, I mean. I went with the emergency repair for the repair party. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the heal's nice, but if you're getting to that fourth heal consistently, mm -hmm. it makes a good choice. If you're not mm -hmm. getting to that fourth heal, it's a waste, but it's the repair party because it's limited, which mm -hmm. in my opinion at this point in the game is absolutely stupid. <laughs> uh, and the reason I say that is when they first did this, it was a good idea. You had to manage your consumable. But when in you can sit there and be pinged all day long with subs, yeah. And you only have one consumable that can get rid of it. Right. There's no skill involved yeah. in the sub using his ping versus you it's just he pings and once it's gone it's gone and with a limited repair party it's even worse because now you have to manage that over somebody who just just now, clicks the button let's make sure that we're using the right terminology you're talking about damage control party and i i made that mistake oh. earlier you're talking about dcp to clear off the uh the fires the floods the the pings right. repair party is the heal right right yeah so you're doing this for the extra damage control party 
And also for the extra 10% for damage control party being useful, the extra heal might come in handy, but like you said, by the time you need that, the game's probably over by that by then anyways, right? Right. All that Okay. In my opinion, the the extra heal just grants you an extra god I screwed up. Yes. Which you want to limit to a minimum. Right. All right, now let's look at your flag. So you don't want to detonate. Congratulations. Uh, fire and I'm flood winning. reduction. I'm winning, guys. That's literally the only flag besides a ram flag you truly need to run. Everything yep. else is a nice bonus. Yep. So fire, flood reduction, hydroacoustic consumable time, repair party consumable, boosted, uh, engine, secondaries, and consumables. Now you're not actually running a ram flag. Uh, in this one if I'm going to change on I'm going to get rid of the hydro one for a ram yeah I would agree with that the hydro one is useful if you know you're you're in a position where you need it but for the most part uh, you don't need that extra 10% uh, the, up, uh, up time for the hydro the, the thing with it is it's also what the ship is being used for the 10% mm -hmm. is somewhat nice well, but at the same point I'm waiting longer for it to get back off cooldown when you need Correct. it. Correct. Correct. It, it's a double-edged sword. It, it's useful if you're going to push into something, but okay, you're also waiting for it longer to get back to. I I, I really could have used it ten seconds oh, yeah. ago. Which now, all right, let's take a look at the lineup here. I mean, I you've am got... calling this game too. Okay. So it's you and the Schlieff in Montana. You've got a Des Moines, a Petro. You've got tr double Marceaux and a Yu Yang. That's probably a radar. I can't yeah. tell, but it's probably radar. It's, okay. it's a radar YY. Uh, yeah. The, the YY is in charge of the Marceau div. Like, if anybody doing this, is you need one of those three players to be in charge of what the hell they're going to do next. Okay. Right? It Because the caller over can, can just is looking pretty much at a mini map mm -hmm. uh but they're coming up with the overall plan mm -hmm. to where the marshals kind of they need to micromanage on who to focus yep and it's better for one of them because they can make the call easier than the guy who's clearly going to the other side of the map who's just mm -hmm. looking at map information and, and other stuff not actually at the ships Right, so, I mean, that's one of the nice things in clan battles is you really do want somebody that's calling kind of overall, and then you've, you want somebody that's calling locally. So I like the idea of having Yu Yang being a local caller. Um, and then, yes, that's a good catch, by the way, Drifton. The enemy team has zero battleships. They've got four Des Moines and a Salem. They've got a 10.5 kilometer gearing. And there's Summers. Now, you might want to pause it. Go ahead. I failed pause. to realize the gearing was the 10 kilometers. Mm -hmm. Right. But, like, we were all like, oh my God, they're going with the meme comp. And, yep. you know, I'm looking at Karma Monitor, you know, because I'm an elitist idiot. Uh -huh. But I'm going, listen, they're going with the meme comp. Doesn't mean they don't have the skill to pull it off. This team has the skill to okay. pull off the meme con. Uh -huh. Right? So we're not taking this as a joke. We're, we're okay. taking this as a serious match, uh -huh. per se. Right? Now, like, and I think that's important for people. If you see a meme cop like this is, you think it's a pushover. It's it's not going to be a pushover for you. Right. Now, the, the thing about that is... Um, a Des Moines can hide in smoke. A battleship really can't. So what I would I would expect them to do is send once send the Summers to one cap, the gearing to another cap, and they will smoke the rest of their team form and spot form. Of course, they've got radar if they need it too. And those Salem and Des Moines combos, they're they're just gonna buzzsaw whatever they come across. The so, other thing is they don't need to smoke. Des Moines and Salem have great arcs to where they, mm -hmm. just, they c can just use an island. They can, but I find that with, with this kind of comp, generally speaking, I would expect them to be a little bit more aggressive so they can uh, 
just basically wipe whatever destroyer they come across off the map. Now, it's Yu Yang, Marceau, Marceau. They're not going to come across one destroyer. They're going to come across all three destroyers at once, which is probably going to be a challenge for them. Kings, thanks for the follow, by the way. Um, I, there is a troll comp, but like I said, just because it's a troll comp doesn't mean that they're not going to try to win, and they have the skill yep. and talent to do it. Now, Patton's asking about sending Petro and Schlieffen alone to sea. My thought on the matter is um, you your destroyers are your push side for the most part, so I would expect them to go forth. Whatever they see, they nuke, right? If that's the gearing or the summers, they will completely destroy it or at least make it so low health that they have to back off. You two are the anvil to their hammer, right? Yeah, we're, we're there to stall C. I mm -hmm. mean, obviously with this comp, the, the main push side is going to be yeet their DD, right? If you can yep. get that DD kill early, it's 90% GG because yep. that side has now lost the visions and your Marcells are free to do what they want. Yep. Usually what you do is they yeet that DD, then guess what they're going to do? Well, the other side knows that the Marcel's on the other side, and it's going to take some sort of time for the Marcel's to travel back. Yep. So they do the push, the Marcel's transfer over, yeet that DD, and oh no, you lost the the one cap. So you just go for the other cap. And and right? in particular, this map, uh, it does lend itself well to Marcel's repositioning. They can go right through the middle once the destroyer is gone and, and get to see relatively quickly. So, okay. There was also a question about why Marceau's instead of Bear. Do you have an answer for that, sir? That's what they wanted to play. Uh, this okay. is not the main put. This is like the second team of, mm. you know, people that you want to play. It's not to say that these guys aren't good enough to do a push, but mm -hmm. anybody who does this for a while, there's always one main push team. Yep. And then there's everyone else. Yep. Right. Okay. We are trying to get a second team, right? And this is this is just a second team. Good. Right. We're I'm new to the to playing with these guys, so it makes sense that this is that that I'm on the second team and we're just trying to build cohesion and mm -hmm. come up with things that works. If we're the ones at the end of the day that end up being the push team, it, it, whatever. There's okay. two teams doing it. It doesn't matter which one of the two teams does it, as long as a team does it. Yep. Okay, let's continue the, the replay at this point. Excuse me. Now, minutes this in is, we haven't had any action, a lot of talking. This is clan battles, guys. This is what it is. It's a lot of talk. It's a lot of discussion. It's a lot of setting things up. Uh, if you're looking for a lot of action, no offense, you're in the wrong place. Day one of a tournament is where you see a lot of action. So... All right, your destroyers are continuing to move forward, and we're following the destroyers right now because, frankly, you guys at sea, I mean, you're not going to do too much other than radar, kite away if you need to, but I would expect the action to take place at B here. You're detected now, by the way. Oh, yeah. Um, spotting through the old uh, being shot at. Mm-hmm. C is being detect uh, is being capped. So your Petro is within radar range, I think. Oh, I definitely we're definitely communicating that. Mhm. Mm There's the radar. Oh. Okay, gearing and Des Moines detected. So now these guys know they have the summons, right? Like whether you hit this gearing or like in when you initially do this. Mhm. Mm the gearing's gonna get the cap, guys. There's nothing we can do to stop him from getting this cap. Well, there is you just nothing. Did. You just did. You radar, radar forced him back. Radar's down, now he just backs in. Right. Th so, that's what I mean by, like, there's nothing. All we did was stall him getting that cap. Mm -hmm. But the information is more important. Now, the gearing having 10.5 kilometer torpedoes, that's an important distinction as well. The 10.5s, these are Fletcher torpedoes. They reload faster than the 16.5s that Gehring typically has. And that so, bites me in the butt not knowing that. I was... I had a feeling. 
I, I, now, I wasn't prepared for that. Meanwhile, on the other end, we've got Salem, uh, Des Moines, Summers, smoked all across here. And that's going to allow the Des Moines to get a very advantageous spot south of the of the, uh, the A-cap. You're trying to punch the Des Moines in the face. See if that does anything. Probably not. Attention. Nope. Position. Now, so, at what point you're going to see the Petro do something? And this hmm. is probably the only brilliant call I had uh, <laughs> per se in this game. Okay. Is you're so used to facing a team with a battleship, you forget there's no battleship here. Right, right, there's right. There's no cross shot on the Petro. So back up and go oh, mid. Right. I, mm -hmm. Ironically, this is where the only brilliance at. I'm actually trying to get up north to deal with the top Des Moines. Sure. Uh, and I wouldn't have done this knowing that the Garing Torps reload every 45 seconds. Because uh -huh. if you're running if you're running those, you're going near full Torp rebuild, uh, reload to just spam torpedoes. Right. The 16.5s take a little bit longer to reload, and therefore it's a little bit more difficult to play a gear in Kazi. But now, by the way, you guys can't see the ships, and that's just because Puddin, who is our replay uh, provider, is so far away from these two Marceaux that we can't see them as they just continue to fire into the Des Moines that's uh, stuck on this island at this point. Uh, I, for the most part, I'm just letting the, like I said, the Marcel div, or like our YY, yeah, do the do the focus call on what to do. Yep. I'm pretty much just trusting these guys to they're gonna put themselves in good spots. So Monty Patton says is pushing too far. I was just gonna mention he is he is far forward, but the question is. Um, I don't I don't know that he's too far just just yet. It depends on the torpedo range of the Summers, which is probably within range at this point. Uh, if that's the case, if I'm Cypher, I'm either um, trying to do some zigzags to dodge torpedoes or I'm going to reverse. And it looks like he's going to reverse right here. Major Dent in the Des Moines detected. That's an oof. Because he's now broadside to the Des Moines. He's going to be forced to turn hard here. And take a bunch of hit points uh, of damage in order to make that that turn. Oh, but there's my brilliance. I told the Petro to reverse, and there's a Des Moines pushing him. Yeah, good brilliance. Like th that was just pure, to be honest with you guys, that was just pure luck that we'd made the call for the Petro to start pushing up. The and side. Petro dispatches him like that. I believe that was getting into a position where he turned out to help the Petro. Yep. Right. Like, this is the other thing about Clamus. You're going to take damage. You got to mitigate it the best mm -hmm. you can. Mm -hmm. But he's pretty much ignoring being shot at and helping our Petro survive because now they're down a yep. ship on that side. We're losing yep. HP. Yep. But they're down a ship. Now, here at that point, I think your he decision to. Wanna... Yeah. I think your decision to YOLO in like this is, is reckless, frankly. <laughs> it is. Because you don't need it. This was a bad call. You this wait. This was a bad decision for me. Yeah. You wait for the, uh, the Petro to reconnect with you, and then together you guys push. Separate is a problem. But again, like you said, you didn't think that he had the quicker reloading torpedoes. Right. And Because he's torpedoing you right now. It he just sent torpedoes against me, which is why I decided to push in. Because I'm like, oh, it's going to be a minute. I should be able to be turned out. Mm -hmm. Not so. So does this mean that Putin took a pl uh, play at Andrew's book? No, I didn't survive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look at, by the way, how about the fact that Yu Yu Yang went all the way through ACAP? And now they did. So they detect you the Summers. Summers is going to hopefully die here. Unfortunately, I think due to dense positioning 
and more muscles are limited shots. Yes, the Marceaux were, were in the corner. I know there was, Patton mentioned them being AFK. They weren't. They were shooting at the Des Moines in the corner. But the problem is, there's two Des Moines there. And they were doing what looks like a decent job of rotating through uh, who's going to be shot at by the Marceaux for a bit. And if you look, I would have had my hydro back if I didn't have the flag. That's right. The flag screwed you. But it got you a death pick, so bonus. But it got me a death pick. I will take the death pick. I probably, in the hindsight, should have just pushed out the Des Moines. Yes. Because either I kill him or he's low enough to where the Petro now gets a double strike. Right. Um, but, okay, so your Marceau's managed to, to farm down one of the Des Moines. The other Des Moines is the next target for the Marceau's. One of the Marceau's is healthy, the other one is not. I mean, um, yeah, you're right that a Ragnar can farm it down better. But guess what? Nobody knew we were going to face nothing but Des Moines. You've got to make what you have work. That's right. Radar up by your Petro. And, um, okay, he's going to smack the gearing, sure. I mean, at this point, it did start warning people, like, the gearing's torps are just reloading really fast. Yep. Unfortunately, right. gearing's right outside of, uh, that radar's short, I should say. Petro takes a torp, midships. And this is, uh, uh, problematic, I'd say. For everybody. I'm really shocked that Bukin had decided he was going to go for this. Especially after taking that torp from the, dim from the gearing. I mean, that's the one slinging uh, the HE up at him. Uh -huh. I had said, you know, like, if you have to, just, just ram him. Just take the trade. And he's not going to do that. Booking it is going to go for the drive-by. He's the one who said we can't afford it because look at the points. That Okay, that's true. He's right. So... I did tell him, stop turning, go straight. Just use your rear turret or let them farm it down. Like, that's don't good. give that's good. the money. Don't give the Des Moines broadside. That's right. Butts hurt right here on war. We'll kill him. Okay, so they get the trade. Your Montana, by the way, had a had a clutch kill earlier. Can you get the Salem? Nope. Summer's Torps. I think the hardest thing is you guys weren't able to kill out that Summers early. He's so low, especially if he's got adrenaline rush now. You've actually made him stronger. I mean, this is this this clan battles, guys. Surprisingly, just like a tournament, all the actions in the last two three minutes. Oh, there's the Summers. Radar's up. Okay, so Dent has his radar up. Okay. Yeah, Dent was spotted and pushed mm -hmm. with his radar. Okay, can you get the kill in the Summers? That's that's gonna be a key right here. The, the Summers... If the Summers dies, I obviously it's GG. Mm -hmm. There he goes. Wow. You sure about that, Patton? Irredeemable installing WoW shipbuilder development without us. I, I don't really know much about that, so I, I'm afraid I can't help you too much there. I wish I could, sorry. I don't even know what that is. Alright, so now it's just. You're gonna win unless the gearing is able to completely kill you. Build end. Right. I mean, once again, this is one of those I'm reminding everybody, like, his torps are reloading quickly, so he's he's gonna have them. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I'm just obviously letting Montana know, just park behind the island. But, you know, it, it's going to be a Des Moines and French DDs versus the Gehring. Mm -hmm. uh, I use like, replay like, render bot, which it, maybe that's the program you're talking about. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't installed it locally. I just use the bot on my Discord. I think this is very risky. There was no need for Dent to come out like this. I like agree, could... but I was mocking him about he's going to eat a torpedo, so he eats one on purpose. Hmm. Dent trying to win harder. Well, I mean, that could have been a real big problem. It wasn't, but it could have been. All right, let's take a look at the replay render. And then we're like going to hang I it up think for the day. The... I, I think the the key to this was the Petro reversing and getting the Des Moines kill. Because yes. the Petro ends up with two kills. If the Petro stayed there, the Des Moines would have gotten on his rear. And, and your rear, too. Yeah, it, and then it would have been GG. Yeah. But, I mean, even with the Montana getting the clutch kill... Like, we just got the kills when we needed them and got the caps and retook everything. Right. Right. This is the danger of no battleship. This is, no offense, guys, this is what you're going to start seeing once we're only limited to one BB. Mm -hmm. Right. Are you going to set it up for the cross shots or are you going to set it up for the push? Right. You can control the push. You can't necessarily control the cross shots. Right. Uh, irredeemable. Like I said, I don't really know too much about this. I just use the tool. It's uh, on my channel. There's a uh, replay render channel. Um, so, you know, there you go. Yeah, there was no center presence. That's true. All right, so here's the part you sent the Petro back. Oh, God, Stevie's fur. You sent the Petro back, and that's obviously very fortuitous. Also very fortuitous is the fact that your Petro was able to just nuke that Des Moines. Oh, yeah, the, that Des Moines got caught out. Like, yes. I'm sure he was like, oh, crap. I, I didn't expect the Petro to reverse. Because once again, usually you send the ship to there and you're like, you know, you stay there because you're like, you're always, you're constantly thinking in the back of your mind. I can't yep. let that BB get a cross shot. And it's like, wait, there's no battleship. Yep. Yep. Um, and there's the part where you died. Again, I think, you know, stopping and, and waiting for Petro to catch up to you would have been the smart play. But hey, whatever. Yeah, like I, I mean that was that was my mistake. Mm -hmm. The guys clearly car carried me, but I mean, oh wow, I'm going with the elite strategy. If the two ships go to one side, their job mm -hmm. is to die really slow. Yep. Right. The reason I'm bringing a Schlieff in is because we have a Petro, and all we're trying to do is delay. Yep. And what I'm trying to do is set up my detection right at Petro's radar range. So yes. the second I'm spotted, he hits the radar. Right. And my Nuremberg start going to town. Right, sure. Uh, see, Red, you don't get how the Des Moines didn't keep his head cool and aim for the turrets. So one thing is what you're just mentioning there, mm -hmm. going for turrets, is typically more of an EU kind of thing. We don't see that much on the NA, on North America server. Um and you know you can say whatever you want about skill level of players and stuff it's just it's just not a commonality in north america that people go for turrets uh stalingrad turrets maybe with des moines turrets as well but it's it's not extremely common he might have done it and just failed to do anything but it was being shot at by two people the problem with going for turrets in that situation if you're talking about that des moines against the petropavlovsk as being mentioned by Patton, he's being shot at by two people. Going for turrets takes time. And by the time you get the turret, whether they DCP or not, and then hit it again and, and perma the turret, I mean, by the time that happens, you could have killed the whole ship. So I, I think that's the problem that you run into there. If it's a one-on-one -on -one like, like this and nobody else is shooting and you've got 10 minutes to decide the outcome... Yeah, go for the turrets. It's not the case in this one. 
Uh, put in anything else to share from this replay? No. All right. Well, thank you for sending that in. That was a. It's always fun looking at clan battle replays, you know. I mean, like I said, I picked this one because it's something you don't normally see. Sure. Right, and uh, people are going to have to start getting used to. Maybe not running a PP is going to be a viable strat if there's only one on the board. Honestly, I can see that. I can totally see that. 